Shanxi. It is now unmistakably clear that we face an unprecedented climate and ecological emergency. And this has been evident to scientists for many, many decades now, but it was deliberately covered up by corporations and by politicians for decades. They covered up the truth in order to protect the interests of a very powerful minority, the likes of Gina Reinhart, the likes of Twiggy Forest in this country. It has become the new normal now to acknowledge that yes, climate change is real and nod sadly at the fact that they can't really deny the science too much. But they speak about climate change as if it's some kind of abstract phenomenon far beyond their control and not their fault. It's not their crime and they're not responsible for it. This is a total lie and is equivalent to denialism. The politicians want to deceive us, not just in this country, but all around the world. Because those who are responsible for the mass extermination of species, those who are responsible for the wildfires that ravage across the world, these people who are responsible, they have names and addresses, and they have billions upon billions of dollars, and they stole it from this planet. It's important to say that nature is not dying, but it's being killed. We face not extinction, but extermination. And the people who are responsible have known all along. At the most recent climate summit in New York, as Amy referenced before, Greta Thunberg, a pretty inspiring woman, stared down the faceless men in suits who are directly responsible for the devastation of the climate. And she said to them, and I want you to repeat after me, how dare you? 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 And I think it's really important that we maintain that kind of defiance, that kind of resistance and energy in the face of our own climate leviathans. We need to maintain it in the face of Scott Morrison and Berejiklian and Albanese and Anastasia Palaszczuk. In the midst of this bushfire catastrophe that New South Wales has been facing, what have any of them been doing to limit the global temperature rises? They are doing nothing, but actually they're doing far worse than nothing. So alongside this full throttle expansion of coal and oil and gas all across the country, at every level of government, they are attempting to outlaw climate activism, the people who want to sound the alarm because we're facing an emergency. Scott Morrison now is cracking down on boycotts of environmentally destructive industries. Palaszczuk is locking up climate protesters for up to two years in Queensland. And Daniel Andrews, the most progressive politician in the country supposedly, celebrates the police when activists get their legs broken by the cops at blockades. As Amy mentioned, I've experienced a very small dose of this repression myself. I was held in custody for 27 hours for daring to sit down on a city street. I was arrested with 37 others for refusing to reply with a police direction. They refused to release us until we signed bail conditions that said that you cannot associate with anyone in Extinction Rebellion and you may not go into the city until it is that you are proven guilty or not guilty, which would be months and months. Passes. Myself and one other rebel, I hope maybe Tom is here today, uh, refused to sign these conditions. And so the cops held us overnight in a cell. We went without food for more than 17 hours. And then when we were granted our unconditional bail by the magistrate, they still held us for another six hours illegally. And such is their disrespect for the law and their contempt for climate protesters. <laughs> Politicians and kind of mainstream opinion around the place like to proclaim that in a liberal, pluralistic society like Australia, that we have the right to protest and that we have the right to freedom of speech. But what they really mean is that they'll accept protests that are easy to ignore. They'll accept protests through gritted teeth a lot of the time. And any protest that dares to disrupt the status quo will be deemed criminal. And they will say that the participants in that protest deserve to be punished and outlawed from the CBD. How does Scott 
Morrison justify this? He calls protesting an indulgent and selfish practice which uh, threatens what it means to be Australian. <laughs> it's pretty ironic, really. I could reel off quite a number of selfish and indulgent practices of the Australian Prime Minister. It's pretty indulgent and selfish to open up the Northern Territory to fracking, and it's pretty indulgent and selfish to send in the Australian Federal Police on the ABC, and it's pretty indulgent and selfish to try and criminalise trade unionism in this country, which has been the key thing the Liberals have been trying to do since they got re-elected. <laughs> Morrison wants us all to be quiet Australians, and that means to lie down and accept the terrible state of affairs in this country. So if exerting your basic democratic rights is un-Australian, then I'm very proud to be un-Australian. I can't think of anything more important than being a silent Australian in the face of such injustice. So while there are children in detention camps, I refuse to be a quiet Australian. And while Indigenous people are routinely murdered by the police, I refuse to be a quiet Australian. And while the earth is a commodity to be sold for profit, I refuse to be a quiet Australian. It is right to rebel and it's right to resist every monstrous face of this system and they are all tied together. But it is not enough just to rebel in anger. We cannot beg at the feet of the rich and powerful any longer. We have to take the power back into our own hands. And together, we can build a world that is free of all of their injustices. We can build a world that is free of the tyranny of the minority. A world that is free of fossil fuels, as well as racism, as well as authoritarianism. <laughs> guidance in how we can do this. We don't have to look far beyond the headlines around the world today. They're making a revolution in Chile right now. They're making a revolution in Lebanon right now. And they're making a revolution in Hong Kong. And it is so inspiring to see those people put their bodies on the line for a better world. So together, in struggle, by standing together, we can be united and fight for a better world. We have a world to lose if we do not, but we still have a world to win. Well, I've still got what remains of my voice. I'm going to try and lead a chant. Because we are unstoppable, another world is possible. Because we are unstoppable. Because we are unstoppable. Thank you, Lily, for an amazing, powerful speech. And thank you for reminding us that the